for life. Do this. Mm, yeah, that looks fine. It. This. Let me just open the chat on a second screen to make sure I see your comments, guys, and we can get this thing rolling. Okay, come on. Stream information. There's my stream and there is my chat. Out. Put to the right. Okay. Um. It. It. Come on. We're okay. We're good. Right. Um. Hey, wise. How's it going? Um. Thank you for joining. So let us begin. I guess I'm. I'm planning. Uh. Basically, because I'm traveling this week, I am kind of condensed all the live streams into this one. I'm planning to quickly do the Elasticsearch video preparations and uh, I don't know, maybe get some suggestions from you guys. And after that, maybe just some questions, answers and just chilling and talking. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, so let's see how that goes. So I'm, I'm I guess I'm going to start with um, Elasticsearch tutorial folder or something. Um, let me need the git thing here. And uh, so the thing with Elasticsearch is that it's it's primarily used for two things. Um, number one is basically searching for stuff uh, like uh, very fast. Uh, and number two is uh, the elk stack, which is I believe right now called Elastic stack. Elastic stack right now is basically the stack for collecting and analyzing logs. Uh, yeah, it seems like it is elastic stack indeed now. Um, I don't remember that cracked, but uh, basically the idea is that you put in the elastic search, Kibana and Logstash all together. And uh, okay, there's sometimes like beats and Hadoop and whatever, if you have like super large scales. But I think we're gonna uh, do a simple project uh, with Node.js for a very basic L stack. So elastic search, Kibana and Logstash. And then we're also going to do another small project that will uh, basically create an elastic search with stuff that you want to search over. Um, we're probably going to use some existing data for that. And we're going to search among those with like a basic query, I guess. I mean, you know, the docs for elastic search are really good because it is an enterprise solution and there's like a lot of uh, people using it. So I guess let's start with. Um, Let's start with docs, maybe uh, with, with sorry with logs. Um, let me do npm init minus y. So uh, we need that. Um, that is super tiny. Let me make it bigger. Let me think what do we need? Um, there was an official package, I believe for um, but I don't really need Elasticsearch package right now, right? So yes, let's do uh, two subfolders. So elk. Uh, yeah, let's call it elastic. Let's let's be be correct and call it elastic stack. Let's make package over there. We're gonna have the first one over here. I have my index.js, and uh, the basic idea is that um, log stash is a log collector, right? So you got this uh, bana and elastic search. So the idea of Elasticsearch is very simple. It takes the Lucene engine, which is an open source Apache project uh, that is basically um, information retrieval thing. So you can do quite a lot of things with it. And it's, I mean, it's a very powerful, very old project. And uh, for example, Apache Solar is an alternative to Elasticsearch that uses it. Um, querying Firebase with Elasticsearch, um, uh, what do you mean by that? So there's uh, Wise is asking in the chat, like, could you go over querying Firebase with Elasticsearch? I mean, Elasticsearch itself is a database, right? So if you want to query it, you have to store stuff in it. So I imagine um, I'm in mean, Firebase, Elasticsearch, unless there's some way to kind of um, do that, I imagine the way you would go about it is just copy the whole, uh, or at least the slice of the Firebase that you need to query into the Elasticsearch, and then just query that slice separately, right? Uh, welcome to Firebase, Firebase, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's let's see how people do that. Maybe I don't know something. So 
So this is Google Cloud Platform. You can set up the Elasticsearch instance there, which is nice, actually. So it's just literally one click setup. It's always good, but we're gonna use Docker as usual here. Um, set up Elasticsearch mapping. Um, okay, so this is our, yeah. So as you can see here, basically what they do is they take the Firebase uh, objects and just copy the needed properties to Elasticsearch and then use the Elasticsearch for querying, I imagine. I haven't gotten to that part yet, but um, yeah, exactly. So they just basically take those fields from Firebase, throw it into the Elasticsearch and then just use it locally because, or I mean, it's in the cloud, but you know, you get the idea. So I don't think there's any any way to do it dynamically because Elasticsearch need to build us uh, Lucene index before it can actually query anything. Right, okay, but let's go back to logging, right? So we got those three parts. We got Elasticsearch, which stores the data, indexes it and allows you to search over it. We got Kibana, which is a user interface for uh, visualization of uh, stuff in Elasticsearch. And we got a log stash, which is um, collection, parsing and transformation thing for logs, I guess, platform application. Um, um, so yeah, uh, the, Again, as I said, we're gonna use Docker here. Uh, so I'm gonna call Docker Compose YAML. Uh, this is gonna be our um, Elasticsearch uh, or Elastic Stack. let's call it this way. The thing about it is that even though the guys from Elasticsearch rename it to Elastic Stack, most of the articles you're gonna find online is anyway called Docker Elk uh, because this is what it was called before. So it was ELK, -L -E -L sorry. And uh, it's like the first letters of, you know, Elasticsearch Kibana Logstash. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just search and I'm sure there's going to be a um, complete um, Docker Compose somewhere. I mean, it's not rocket science and there should be a simple way of doing it. So yeah, maybe we'll take that. Uh, it seems to be building its own, um, seems to be building its own versions, which is something we don't really want. Um, I am sure. Wait, okay, let's try Elastic Stack. Maybe Stack Docker Compose. So, Stack Docker. Ah, there you go. Okay, they have official one now. That is nice. Okay. So, is that Elastic Stack on Docker right now? Perfect. So, uh, yeah, Elasticsearch has embraced Docker quite some time ago, and uh, they have an official Elasticsearch image that you can just pull and run. Right. So, we can, we can copy that and. Uh, look at that and see what exactly it does. So we got version three. Okay. Um, the environment tag is used through the file specify the version of images run default set in dot env in this folder and can be overridden. Okay, so you can set tag. Um, it is a lot of stuff. Actually, why is it so complicated right now? Or I guess they only they, Oh, they also have the the whole like heartbeat file beat, whatever stuff that we don't actually need most of the time. Okay, uh, so yeah, here we are elastic starch, uh, elastic search, Kibana and Logstash, right? Um, okay, so we map this stuff, I guess maybe it's easier to copy um, or to clone the whole folder. It seems like it's okay, so we don't need that. Well, Got some dependency mapping. So we have our own network, which is uh, not something I actually want. So we can kill that. There's a very weird way of writing YAML, even though you know you don't really need those brackets everywhere because easier way of doing it. But okay, we can go with that. Uh, networks, networks. So let's see. Uh, yes, we can just do this thing. Much. Uh, I'm going to simplify that slightly. I need networks as well. So environment, let's see what we have here for the environments. Um, transport. Okay, yeah. So basically, yeah, in this case, we define simple, simple options. Um, okay, so we're gonna call it platinum. Why is it elastic search platinum? I don't think that this is elastic search docker i believe i mean the platinum is the paid version they have so we don't really want that uh we want just a normal one right so i think it's just 
Attack security is enabled. Yeah, we don't really care about security right now, so we can just take the okay. So it's just Elasticsearch 6.0.0, which is the latest release, and kill that. All right. So we map the host to zero. We put the transport to this. We set the password to one to three. We map the ports. We actually don't need the here. Just this. Okay. Then we have Kibana image. Um, do they have Kibana thing here somewhere? Blah, blah 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 okay uh search for kibana docker probably somewhere there as well but it's just not linked from the elastic search because it's a different product uh okay they only have they have a list here cool you can just okay they have six zero as well so we got the six zero zero and uh password one to three we need to map the ports I mean, you know, it's like this this does take some time, but you only have to do it once. So when you once you set all of this up, you're basically done and you uh, rarely have to touch this basically only on updates of um, Elasticsearch, Kibana, whatever. So, okay, I imagine Logstash is also 6.0, right? Yep, it is also 6.0. Um, I think we don't really need those like it's thing so i'm not even sure what is that because i never used that so let's see elastic search beats what is beats uh data shippers Beats is a platform for single purpose they, they install as lightweight agent okay so basically uh yeah this is uh they simplify the gathering of metrics from the uh, services if you if you cannot integrate it in your uh, in your own uh, service, right? But since we can, we are not we, we're not going to be needing that. Okay, so we got our elastic password bond to three. Uh, we have to provide a simple config here, which you can, by the way, do as um, uh, simple arguments for the container, but just for the sake of it, yes, config. And, uh, let's call it yeah logs hash conf. Okay, so this is going to be esconfig and then logstash conf, which is going to take it from our um, from over here. I believe it's quite simple. Okay, yeah, so we got the hard bits. I mean, I don't think we need the hard bits, right? So just fill that. I think we just need the output here. Uh, password on the three. Elastic, yeah, that looks fine. Okay. Um, then they run the containers to set up log stash. So why that sounds weird? Okay, let's kill all the beat ones so we don't need that. Need Kibana and um, log stash needs setup, which is like that should have been done within the Docker, right? And environment this and depends on elastic search yes thank you very much although it depends on is not quite reliable in docker it doesn't really defines the it just defines the execution order so it won't wait for them to start or anything like this because uh, sadly docker doesn't have any health checks or uh, rather it doesn't rely on them when starting containers right um so we got that uh so let's see one of those scripts here uh, oops no that's scripts right Stop Kibana. So that is uh, blah 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 curl. Oh, it's just basically starting and waiting for containers to launch again. I mean, I guess since this is an official thing, why not? Let's go with it. Uh, so we got yes scripts. Let's just call it like this. So we got this is what set up Kibana. Let's set up. Bana shell, there we go. And this is gonna be e scripts and I have e scripts here for log stash and we're gonna have a setup log stash, right? It's it's like every time I see Docker done this way when you need something else to like actually make it work and you know like short lived containers that will stop afterwards and, and won't work anymore. It it feels a bit weird actually stash is h but uh you know it's official so let's go with it uh yeah we need a password one to three okay um did we configure anything everything um right so log stash 
Yes, I think we are good. No, wait. Logstash should expose some ports as well. Um Okay, there's maybe there maybe there's a better container. Or rather better Docker compose. I'm kind of Okay, so we got the Kibana here, this volumes Elastic Search. Why do they have so many Elastic Searches? Okay, this is definitely not what we want. Um so let me think. So we can close this. We don't really need that anymore. <laughs> Um, while I'm investigating this, feel free to ask questions if you have any, uh, or to clarify anything that you know is not clear what I'm doing here. Basically, probably allow discourse globally. Um, elk stack. Okay, so there's a elk stack over here. It's to be oversimplified, maybe that's a good thing. Okay, Redis, Elasticsearch, Ibana, Logstash. Logstash does not expose any ports. We, oh, we, they use bridge driver. Um, and okay, I don't really want to use a bridge driver, so we're gonna just see getting started with Logstash. We're gonna see what ports we need to actually during your first event. Go, um, Logstash. -y. Now this but config um this might be actually a good idea to have a look at the log stash config here because i feel like this example one is not exactly a output yeah so we set up the output right so we got the i mean the only interesting thing basically is output because input is going to be manual so we're going to have our uh, logger within node.js that will just send logs to the log stash we don't need filters so basically the log stash allow you to define filters by properties of the JSON that comes into the logs or by, you know, running regular expressions or whatever you want. Okay. Um, uh, wait a second. This is still not added somewhere. Wait a second. I think I had it somewhere in, even in my, like in the project I was involved in. Hobbit platform. And over those YAML, that one. So we got Kiko, Krabbit. So this doesn't have logging. Bunch of other stuff local. I bet no, not here as well. Hmm. I where did I have that? Okay. Um. Oh. No. Oh. Hmm. Oh man. Okay. I guess we have to Google a bit longer. Um. By elastic search, so elk, docker compose. One of them should work at some point. We're going to find that and uh, use it. So, okay, they also have their own images, which I guess maybe they do that because they want to have that all that bollocks with 5000 TCP inputs. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's have a look at the log stash config, docker compose YAML. So, okay, environments, passwords, ports, 9.2.3. Why do I need 9.3? Well, whatever. I guess this is the like secure port or something, but uh, let's expose it as well. No, we already, we already use it, so why expose it? It's better. That's fine. Okay, log stash config. Okay, so yeah, let's expose 5,000. Then ports. And a log stash config. I have a look at their config. Um, log stash. Oh, this log. Where's the config? E log stash. Where is it? No ADC here. Why is that a thing? Alrighty then. Form elastic search. Kibana. You can find default config there. There is a ah okay so there are config okay no those are also not come on I probably should have forked the one that I used last time and just save it somewhere uh, for the future use okay um Docker Compose L container I mean let's let's just see Elastic Search. 
for compose up. Let's see if that works. So it creates the default network. Okay, it's gonna pull the images because I don't really have them. Uh, luckily for us, they are not that large. So let's see, that should not take too long. Meanwhile, uh, while it's pulling it, we can think, do you guys have any suggestions? Uh, what kind of data do we wanna search over? I mean, one that always comes into my mind because I've been working with it for past few months, let's put it this way, is the OpenStreetMap uh, full text search. So basically you can download the dump here that includes all the locations of OpenStreetMaps and you can just uh, search over that. So this is what we did in the end. We built um, Elasticsearch index with that. We can use this to have uh, 100K uh, geonames here, like a slice of it. So um, it's a few megabytes that should be sufficient for the demo purposes. But if you have any better suggestions, we can go with that as well. So let me know. Okay, we got all this stuff starting. I uh, wonder why they use this CentOS 7 here as a base image, which sounds weird as hell. Okay. Come on. All right, there you go. It's starting Elasticsearch. I mean, um, all of those uh, tools are written in Java, so they are kind of heavy. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, you know, Java tooling is expectedly heavy and uh, I mean, surprisingly, it's quite memory efficient. Let's put it this way. Okay, we got the Elasticsearch running. I think Logstash is running as well. There's our Kibana starting and theoretically, which port is Kibana um, 5601? Go to localhost 5601, we should see, um, no, it's on reach, eh, all crashed because what? Uh, it, uh, that, that, wait, 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 wait. Expected error, okay, so all errored out. Elasticsearch seems to be fine. Log stash. Password must be at least six characters lock, come on. Okay, D stop i guess they're all stopped no not all move um yeah password one two three let me do this and uh five no, four four five six yes that should be six characters please tell me you won't tell me that it's too too easy password should contain at least 20 letters and all of them should be obscure and unreadable on. All right, Elasticsearch starts first. The good thing, uh, we don't really have any volumes, right? So we only have volumes for configs, which means in this setup, the all the data will be lost. So that's not something you want to do. And if you're running it in production, you obviously need to map the volumes to your local hard drive or form volume. Okay, uh, set up Kibana exited. That's expected. Kibana exited with code one. So logstash seems to be running. Uh, error settings, bug password must be a string. Received round of, oh, come on. God. <laughs> right, okay, let's try set it a string. A-S-D-F-G-H, right? That's a string, that's a six character string. L, let's see, or M minus F, and let's try that again. That is, Somewhat annoying. I think there is a way to disable the security at all, uh, which is kind of nice for local deployments, but obviously not something you want to do in production. But I'm too lazy to look it up because it's kind of this enterprisey way of doing it with like 25 flags that you have to pass into stuff. So we're just going to go with that. Okay, so here's our elastic search. It is now up, I think. Security what? License is non-compiled for security. License expired feature. Okay, some license stuff. But they seem to be working actually. Refresh that. No, that's no persistent UUID. Okay, monitoring license. Okay, pipeline terminated. Uh, what? 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 Wait, what? We got a bunch of messages here that uh, seems like Kibana actually logged. Um, yeah, there we go. So Kibana actually started. 
and we got our nice UI here, but something um, something actually died, right? Bigger. I think it was log stash, but um, over logs minus F, um, elastic search, log stash, yes. So pipeline terminated. Uh, I guess our config is wrong, basically, right? Because it just doesn't have any inputs. So basically, since we're going to use Winston, uh, for example, I'm, basically, you, you can use any logger. Um, um, yeah, so basically, you would use any logger that supports uh, log stash format that can basically send logs to log stash. Uh, in this case, for example, we can take Winston, right? And uh, I don't think that they have now this new version that is unreleased and it's already in the main docs, which is extremely annoying. So maybe hit Pino log stash. Uh, yeah, Pino transports. Okay, cool. We can try Pino. Um, so the question from chat is, if you did make an app with it, how would you deploy this? Uh, normally, you have a separate server that gathers the logging. So you deploy like elk stack on it. And then basically, you say all to all your loggers, send your logs over to that server. So basically, once we when we will set up the uh, when we will set up the logger, you will see that basically we pass in the IP address and the port of our log stash, and that's where the logs go. And so, you know, we just send them over network. And, uh, that's it. Okay, Pino Elasticsearch, uh, where's the log stash on log stash? Okay, so it's just Pino socket. Yeah, as you can see, basically it's just a TCP connection, and you just emit whatever logs you have. Um, right, and this is the config. Okay, oh, right, so we should say inputs. Cool, yeah, we can we can do that. We can config it this way. Oh, yeah, password should be this, but I guess it gets patched by the environment variables, right? Oh, okay. So we can stop that. Force kill it to CRM minus F. In, okay, up, start that. It shouldn't uh, die anymore. And then we can actually turn odd. So we need what? We uh, Pino and Pocket, right? I mean, maybe Pino is not particularly best choice for um, resistant logging when you have something long running because you have to actually pipe it. But um, I think it will be good enough for this demo. So you know, is extremely small and um, good for testing, basically. Okay, so we want to do that and then node index. Yes, right. Then we have our index JS. And then we just take the Pino example. See nothing crashed yet. That's a good, good thing. Okay. Um, so here's our Pino logging. And we're gonna say our Pino Pino info hello world, right? That's that's all we actually want to do to me not complain about um, stuff and I guess we can also try different levels just to see how that will look in um, uh, Kibana this is this is what's interesting basically right okay uh, it seems to be started so let's make sure all our components are up uh, so we should Yes, so we got Logstash, we got Kibana, and we got Elasticsearch. All of them are up. We refresh. Kibana should actually load and show us the GUI. Yes, index pattern. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we don't really have any indexes right now. Miss that because we don't really need that. And theoretically, if we now do npm start or yarn start, whatever you prefer, it should send those two logs uh, into the sockets. So. Let's see, uh, Kibana Elasticsearch, um, does it okay, create an index? So it seems to be indexed, uh, seems to have indexed the logs. There we go. So if we now create this new um, pattern, we should be able, um, so what fields do we want? I mean, we want message level, I guess. Um, filter timestamp, uh, come on. Index pattern, just have everything, please. 
Page list, uh, blah, blah, blah. So they will all types of filter. Um, or it used to be, it, no, okay, I guess log stash is better, but it used to be clickable. How do I? No, this is editing. Oh man, they changed the UI of that thing again. And uh, yes, we want discover, right? There we go. Okay, cool, finally. Um, the UI used to be entirely different in version five and before that. So it's like, excuse me if I uh, don't really find myself right away, but uh, here's our created basically log stash uh, logging visualizations. And we can say that, okay, we want level and we want message. And now you can see that basically here's our, uh, we got two messages. Um, one, of the, uh, one of them is level 30, the other is level 50. I assume uh, level 50 is an error, level 30 is uh, info. And uh, yeah, basically this Kibana UI allows you to, first of all, it gives you a face search. So if you have more fields uh, than just, you know, message and host, you can actually do like pretty complex queries over it. And this is basically elastic search bit. And uh, then you can visualize stuff and it's all in real time actually. So you can, uh, you know, have uh, time ranges as well and auto refresh, uh, obviously like, yeah. So if I turn on auto refresh, say five seconds and we're gonna say one of three or level one of three. So I'm gonna rerun that again. We're gonna see that in a, five second refresh, right? So it's gonna refresh it on. Refresh it, yeah, there we go, okay, it appeared. So basically, yeah, this is the elk logging stack. Um, I mean, I've we've only found it useful uh, on a really large platform. So like the Hobbit big data benchmarking platform that has like, what was it? 10 moving parts. So this has like 10 services that interact with each other and then it starts additional services that it benchmarks and you have to collect logging from all of them to actually figure out what the hell broke. And this was one of the, you know, only cases that I worked so far on that required a special distributed logging uh, that would sort of allow you all this complex stuff. So, but it's still, you know, it's very, easy to set up. Uh, if you have loggers that can tap into it, it's like, uh, quite nice. So in this case, we used Pino with the Pino socket thing. But as you see, there's just an HTTP socket. And for example, if we take uh, Winston logger, and I guess there's a bunch of others uh, that support it. So Winston, for example, has um, uh, do they have a log? Yeah, so they have the log stash. Um, what they call it log stash transport. So you just initialize the log stash transport in Winston, give it address and Winston will automatically send all the logs to that transport, which is kind of nice. Right, so this is the first use case uh, for Elasticsearch. This is the stack uh, for logging, right? So uh, kill all of that. Uh, let me just make sure it's clean. Yep, yeah. so I am gonna, um, oh, I guess that's no. Set elastic stack node modules. Nope. We do not need node modules, right? Git ignore node modules very much. Okay. So git uh whoops. Git add basic L or okay, let's let's call it elastic stack example. Okay. So this is a very basic example once again. Uh, so if you don't want to use loggers, as you've seen, there was this uh, beat, Beats platform that allows you to auto set up, I guess, them within your uh, servers, or I guess, I'm, I don't know if it's going to work within containers. I mean, they probably would, right? Because you can just run them as a daemon somewhere in the background, which is kind of uh, anti Docker way, but uh, probably it would work. Have to have a look at them. Okay, so we got that. And uh, now we're gonna talk about uh, search. So uh, let's call it search, right? So I'm gonna call it index.js over here. Uh, we're gonna go into search. Oh, well, too much. Uh, let's see search. Let's go into search bit and do npm minus y. Right, so um, here's the deal. Um, searching is, as I said, done via Lucene and essentially Elasticsearch itself is a database, right? Um, since there were no better uh, suggestions for 
water search over, we're gonna gonna take that uh, OpenStreetMaps data. We're gonna move it over here. Um, LFI, I think it's unzip, right? Ah, no, gunzip, right? There we go. I already did that at some point. Gonna unpack that, and it's gonna be twenty nine meg. Um, that that's fine. That's fine. That's that's small enough, basically. Right, okay, so we're gonna need two scripts. So first one is gonna be import js, uh, which is gonna take this um, CSV file. I don't know if I wanna click it and, uh, okay, it even loads and doesn't crash anything, that's good. We're gonna take that file, we're gonna parse it and we're gonna import it into Elasticsearch. So, um, Elasticsearch, Node.js. There is, I believe it's an official package. Yes, it is an official package cool so there's an official package that uh, basically allows you to interact with Elasticsearch and we also need no TSV parser right um it might be a nice um I, mean, I guess maybe not TSV maybe CSV parser because it's like TSV CSV is the same stuff just the separators are different uh, let's see which one one was recently updated 24 days ago. That's quite recent. So yeah, that's what we need. So basically um, the thing with data import and with processing data with Node is that you cannot actually, like with Go probably you could load the whole thing into memory and then just throw that into Elasticsearch without problems, right? With Node you cannot do that because there's just, it's not as efficient as Go for example, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stream that. We're gonna take the um, take the data. We're gonna stream it through our parser, and uh, then we're gonna split it into entries and uh, transform them a bit and import them into Elasticsearch. Right? Okay. So we're gonna do that um, this. Uh, so our file is gonna be Planet Latest TSV. There we go. Um, so yes being this one i think we should be able to specify separator i believe yep separator so our separator since it's a tsv file is a tab and um gonna do process it right so and uh which is gonna do log three Function over here. Okay, so theoretically, if we run import, no, 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 import. Yeah, there you go. So we have our first entry here. Um, one thing we need to do is we have alternative names, which is a string now. So we need to map that to um, an array, which is easier to then query from the Elasticsearch. Once new data is gonna be data, but we're gonna say that alternative names is uh, alternative names split yes i don't really i mean okay it's not exactly the immutable way of doing stuff but you know what screw that we're just going to do this and yeah it's going to complain that you should mutate the data blah blah okay there we go so we have a nice object that has name alternative names we can search all our, all over all of them we don't need to do additional things. So we have latitude, longitude. They are now, uh, as you can see, strings. So we actually need to say parse floats, right? Because they should be numbers. Otherwise, we would have problems rendering that data long. And then, uh, you know what? Let's let's make them. Uh, let's do it like this. Um, parse floats. Uh, data let so, uh, have additional fields basically that have numbers. Uh, we got place rank and importance. Those shouldn't be numbers as well. So uh, place rank. Again, I'm gonna create new fields just to preserve the original structure. It's gonna be ours floats. Yes, rank, no, yeah. Rank is probably just gonna be the parse int, right? Because rank cannot be a fraction of a number. 
parse floats. This is gonna be um, data importance. So importance, uh, basically importance is, is good to have it as a number because then you can use internal ES, um, sorry, Elasticsearch tools to sort it by importance so that we can actually, when we query for um, London, we actually get the real London, not some place in New Zealand that is named London as well, which, you know, might happen. Is this is what happened with our uh, data. Okay, there is also boundaries here, but we don't need that. And there's Wikipedia and Wiki, Wiki, Wikidata links, which is just nice to have. Right, so we got that. Uh, if we rerun that, we should see that we now have legit longitude numbers and those numbers as well. Okay, cool. Now we need um, Elasticsearch. Got the parsing down, we got the Elasticsearch. Cool, so we got this. Uh, and we need to start the Elasticsearch first, right? Got this, we got the clients. Um, connect. Okay, so first of all, yarn package JSON. Uh, I'm gonna do um, yeah, start. Let's just do this. And I think I had that somewhere. Uh, let me see. I think I had it in location here. It's gonna be very lazy and copy my own code from here. Yeah, there you go. It's gonna save us some time. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna rename that a bit. Call it yes, just for the sake of it. And I am not gonna mount the volume. So normally you would mount this volume to preserve your data, but in this case, we don't really care. Um, I think we're gonna pass it 6.0. So we disable the security and we allow cross origin requests. And I think we are good. Yarn start. Let's see if that actually works. So they changed the config for logs minus FES. Let's see. Modules. Okay, that seems to be working so it doesn't crash. Starting. Okay, it's published. Everything uh, seems to be good. Okay, cool. So that worked. Right, so we have the clients. We uh, connect. Um, we need to first create the collection actually. Click start somewhere over here. Log trace. Uh, I guess this is a new, so this is probably for new. Yeah, I guess we have to pass log trace as well because why not? And I guess let's do it. So we have our main function that's going to be start, it's going to be a sync just for the sake of it. Uh, because if I like async functions, I can make a lot of. Uh, things that are way nicer to do with them than rather than without them. Okay. Um, and ping. Does it allow us using promises? Here's the question. Uh, yes, quick start here, please. And uh, promise API? API. Is it promise API base? No, bulk? No, it's all callbacks. Um, well, Luckily for us, we got um, our util and we can do promiseify, right? So we can say on thing, uh, promiseify client thing, right? It's always nice to have. So we are gonna say await and ping params are request timeout 30. Yeah, that should be 30 seconds. The log ping server and uh, process file. So this is gonna be our import stuff. So I'm gonna say import. Uh, oh, right, I forgot to actually execute start. That is uh, two. 100 cannot read property request of undefined. I guess you cannot permissify it so easily. Um, that probably will fix it. Right? There you go. Okay. So it actually did ping it. Okay. So the next thing is uh, indices delete. So we need to create the index, right? Because this search executes the query over existing index. Right now, we don't really have an existing index, and I don't really see a getting started with that, which is ridiculous. Uh, more examples. Yeah, let's go with examples. They should have um, quick start. 
uh, come on. I guess I guess we can just no not conventions. Yeah, it's L six zero API. Find bulk. Um, yeah, we can also do batch insert, but I don't think it's important. So how how big is our file actually? So uh, hundred thousand. Yeah, that should be relatively fast. So um. Uh, index cre indices create right so this is what we want find indices create okay const create index promisify find clients it i assume it has the it uses the client as exec um thing okay so timeout master so we need the index name here right uh, and await create index. So we create our in what? No, come on. Like this auto import feature on the VS code does not always work quite well. Hey, Renato, how's it going? <laughs> okay, uh, let's create an index. So we got the index is going to be called OSM, for example, right? So we got open street maps thing and console log created index. Um, it actually should be so it will work first time but second time i will run it it will um throw an exception because the index is already there so you cannot create it second time which means we have to uh try catch this right so catch e and we have to see the e um well, Error E. Okay, so the error is what? Did it take? Come on. The error. Error is status. So if if is status equals four hundred. Log x exists. So if index exists, we're fine. Otherwise, we throw uh, error again. So we want to exit early. And uh, okay, uh, you know what? I'm gonna this thing and uh there we go so we connected uh got additional logging i guess we don't really need that so if we remove that we should get less logging perfect okay so now that we created an index we can actually insert entities uh or start index right it was um the bulk thing so create i believe right yeah, so we got this client creates. Okay, and then this means we take our data that we just parsed and we say client create index is going to be OSM type is going to be place. So uh, this type is sort of arbitrary. So you can uh, just, you know, put whatever you want here. ID is gonna be we have data I had some ID there, right? We have OSM ID there. we go going to be always some ID and then body is our data thing. And uh, this case, yeah, when we don't really need to wait, no, wait, we do want to wait for that, which means uh, we can do stream, say stream, wait, uh, what was it? A default streams are not possible, right? So we might no, I mean, okay, that should be fine. Should be good. You know, yeah, so error result. Basically, if there's any error, we're gonna throw error. Yeah, result is doesn't matter. So okay, if we execute that now, um, yeah, okay, we need to do one more thing. We need to say on, uh, is it on end or on done? I always screw up. Uh, console log done. Um, FS create read stream. It returns a stream. Read streams are done. Read stream open close. Oh, and okay. 
always forget this fs create Yes, on end, it ends. On end and finish. Read fires if not on error on close writable. Okay, so it is end. Okay, that's too many bloody things. Okay, and then process exit. Right, so we just exit here, and uh, theoretically, if I start this now, there is. Uh, request error retrying. Why? What? Okay, we got a billion of errors here. The con reset. Question is tiny. Did my elastic search just die? No, it didn't. Why are you not happy about that? So we created the index. Not anymore. Um, you know what? Let's try this maybe. Um, okay, so this did work fine. Uh, if I run it, no, it doesn't start properly. Now, why the hell do you not like my, uh, did I forget something? So we create, does this auto connect? Hello, yeah, got the ping. It does have promises. Why do I promise if I everything? God damn it. It's client ping. It's uh, no client says create. They added promises, but they just forgot to mention it in the library page. That's brilliant. Okay, uh, client creates yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Saving, right? Okay, so it does save that. And there's log error result. Oh, I guess, ah, right, I'm an idiot. I am triggering process exit before it has ability to, right. Document already exists. Yes, that is absolutely true. So we're gonna say yarn is in. Right, so it's going to stop, remove it, and then we're going to start. And I guess the problem is, is that we do too many writes, so we have to actually wait for it, which means uh, I think I'm just going to use Highland JS and make it all a bit nicer. So you are not Highland. Yes, there we go. So Highland is a library that allows you to do some functional stuff on streams. I'm gonna pipe it through CSV and then I'm gonna say map data and then I'm gonna say data. I'm gonna map it within um, app function, right? Uh, I'm gonna do this. I probably should do this. There we go. Done. Um, what did I screw up? I don't need data here. So there. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we map the data and then assumption, I believe, is, was it each? I think. Okay, so it's going to be each here. And the cool thing is streams, so going to reference to stream here. You can say stream. So you can actually, I believe there was a pause method. Yeah. So one of the cool thing is that you can actually just say, Hey, I've had enough data. So we're just going to pause. I'm going to do a write. It's going to be actually a sync. Await client creates blah, blah, blah. This is this. I'm going to stream to my video. Right? Is it resume? Okay. And, um, yeah, because we are now working with a slightly more advanced thing, you know what, we can actually do bulk insert, which will be way more efficient. Um, there is a method to gather, I was batch or something, rate limit, reduce, expect, split, uh, fork, merge, otherwise, series, no, what we want. 
um three batch there we go okay we want it in batches of say 100 100 okay that's going to be basically entries so it's going to be an array of stuff right and then this means we're going to go to elastic search uh, have a look at batch insert out here of course so we have to look at the api and or bulk okay or bulk once bulk and okay so yeah they have this weird way of of inserting stuff so we actually have to map them so this now we have data now we have to map it uh, data into insert entry which is an array which includes data as a second thing and then the first thing it's gonna be index score so it's gonna be osm type is gonna be place and b is gonna be data. right there we go okay we got entries which is an array of arrays which we need to um actually reduce right so we need to make it flat and i'm gonna say body body is gonna be entries reduce uh Later value and it's gonna be simulator concat value and we're gonna start with an array and it's gonna be body at and okay so this is basically what we do we take the bulk of uh, we take we map the data we map it to this format that is required for bulk inserts um, then we map it uh, we batch it with a with a hundred of those. And then we pause the stream, we reduce it to one flat array, and then we bulk insert it. So in theory, that should work perfectly fine, right? Okay, we got the elastic search and and stun process exit, right? So no the import. And underscores oh ugh, come on. Got to import it. Const uh, require island. Meanwhile, we can uh, say so that current index, let's say we just uh, this console log so that we know done with current index. No, no. Where do you take this current ID from? God damn. Plus 100, right? Um, oh, that actually should be this you wrong x there we go in theory i pipe map is not a function uh was it like this yes I think it was like this there we go okay now it works perfect so we've figured out the imports that is 100k so it's gonna take few minutes i guess i'm gonna look at the chat for now and see you guys written a lot of stuff in there um da -da 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 so what's that who why is this is wanting to stream stuff well uh let me know when you're gonna do that i'm definitely gonna watch your stuff i'm i'm always interested in that uh crazy work stuff okay so just uh chit chat that's always good okay so we are halfway through that have imported a okay, wish there should be 100k i think or something like this right da, 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 da. come on so once this is done we're gonna have our elastic search database with a nice 100k osm entries there we go and basically we can take this client thing and take the start function and go into index and obviously we don't really need that uh here so we can kill all of that and in this case we want to do a uh, search right so uh, so i don't want to commit this thing i guess we need to i know that was a bad idea okay we need to ignore it as well git ignore uh, yes okay right so we want the search right so search was here in a, a example for example uh search index yes there we go. 
what we want. Uh, so in our case, index is OSM type place. So basically, if you have more than one type of entities, you can uh, specify it here. And in body, we can say so in this case, we've had um, see so name, so we have name, right? So we can say much name equals front, right? And we can just this once await client search great if I do console log resp we should see some results there we go okay so we got it's I think hits hits because same structures is obviously not another thing you want to use uh, so there's going to be hits from from response hits yes it's oh, it's there we go and here we go so th those are the documents but uh, if we look up top we're probably going to see that the first one is it a friend yeah it is a friend so let's maybe search for london um so now i'm gonna pipe it into sublime because reading from terminal is not exactly pleasant let's increase this so okay so it also finds london uh correctly um but let's do a more complex query right let's do a query that will um elasticsearch multi-field query Basically, the idea is that we have the alternative uh, fields or alternative names, right? So we have name and then we have alternative names, which can contain the same query, right? So we have query. Okay, so it's going to be London, for example. Query. And we're going to say that... Uh, Query strings. So yes. So first of all, you can do conditions. Say, well, in our case, should is not exactly. Yes, may, maybe it's a good pick. So let's try that. So we're gonna say, query. Should, uh, query bool, and then should right. Query bool. Um, let me just close all the things. Okay. So query bool. Then we get should, and then this is an array of objects. I screw it up. All well, this is good. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have one where match, and we get the second match. Alternative names query, right? I believe this is. Oh, it's, it could be objects, right? Uh, like this. Um, up, uh, right, okay, god damn it, I'm messing this thing up. Okay, so it should be match this, this, and this closed, and then this second match. There we go. Okay, now if we run that again, uh, there, there you go. So, for we start, uh, so now it, it looks into alternative names as well. And as you can see, the greater London is now the first result. So, what we want to do is, um, Maybe sort, right? So we're gonna say sort. And uh, I believe it's just one of the parameters to the query. So you can say uh, uh, sort over here. And since we had this nice, um, what was the name of it? The importance num and place rank. So we can sort by both of them. So, okay, sort is an array, x in uh, value, and then order. We are interested in descending order, right? So we can do that, and then we can do base rank, and we can sort by importance number as well. So if we wouldn't parse it and wouldn't make a number out of it, the Elasticsearch would just say, hey, I cannot sort by string, which makes sense. Right, and now we have London first, which makes absolute sense because the place rank and importance numbers are the highest. 
So um, this is basically the, the, the basics or very basics, I guess, of Elasticsearch. And this is how you would apply it uh, when you need to search for stuff. So normally you don't really store the full document in it because it, it has some limitations with it. So you normally have, if you have especially large um, documents, you have like uh, Postgres or MongoDB or whatever with a full document. And then you have uh, the fields that you will search by within the Elasticsearch. You run the search over Elasticsearch and then retrieve the complete document set from your database. Okay, um, let me commit that. Um, let's see, yeah, that looks right. It adds search sample. I probably should um, me md. Let me add the readme here and plastic search tutorial. Tutorial is too many letters. I need not to forget that we use the OSM names here. Uh, um, let's see uh, correctly. So data used for search sample found here. This. Oh, so I actually remember what the hell's going on here. Okay, um, let me have a look at the chat. Uh, hi guys, so what's up? Okay, Wise, let me read your comment right now. Um, I'm in cool projects. I'm now on vacations, you know. As I said, I took vacation until end of a year. So I'm, I've been like slowly tweaking um, Exoframe. So there is the, I'm trying to move it to, what do you call it? Uh, Festify. Broke it quite a few times already. And uh, right now, like basically uh, stumbled upon the problem that Festify doesn't really accept file streams for some reason right now. So that's what I've been trying to figure out. Um, other than that, I actually have been just playing games and chilling and doing nothing. You know, good vacationing time. Right, okay, um, let me commit the readme uh, and maybe create a GitHub repo. And uh, unless you guys have any questions or any things you want to discuss, we can just wrap it up here for today. I hope this has been um, useful for you, at least informational. Uh, basic readme. So I will obviously fill in the readme once I have started doing the uh, record the video and explain it like in 20 minutes as I usually do. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've actually screwed up. So I had uh, the university gives us uh, 30 work days vacation per year. And I only used half of that last year. So I thought, okay, I have like, you know, 15 more uh, for this year, but turns out they burn up for September. And I was like, no. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an idiot for not reading the uh, contract myself. So, you know, plastic search tutorial, let's call it this way tutorial on uh, using last search for um, logging and searching. Uh, by the way, yeah, if you're interested in using Elasticsearch for like quick information searching, I can tell you that this OpenStreetMap data set, which is like um, 10 gigs, I think, CSV file with a uh, um, hundred million entries or something. Elasticsearch returns query results in under two hundred milliseconds, which is insane in my opinion. So it's a really, really solid piece of technology. Okay, let's see. So we do this and we push the stuff here. Um, I mean, you you typically. Um, Elasticsearch is a database, right? So the problem is uh, because it indexes all the fields that you push into it. So, okay, let me let me just redo this. Uh, so Wise in chat is asking, uh, how do you use Elasticsearch if you're storing data in a different database? Do you map fields to Elasticsearch or something? Um, so the thing is that Elasticsearch has a limit to a document size because it indexes each and every one of these fields, right? So uh, Right now we're passing all the fields because the documents are relatively small. If you have something bigger, what you typically do is you say, okay, I have my MongoDB where I have the big documents. 
And then I have my uh, Elasticsearch where I have the ID of the document. This is what we pass here as OSM ID. And then I have my set of fields that I will search over like names or place rank or you know, whatever. So you just do a small slice. Then you do a quick search over Elasticsearch, which returns you top 10 hits usually. You, I mean, normally when you search um, as a human or whatever, you don't really need more than that, right? So it, it's usually paginated anyway. Then you just take those 10 documents, you map them to IDs and you send them to MongoDB and say, hey, give me all of those. And then you just merge them together and give it to the user. This, at least this is the way we have been using it. And works pretty well. It's it's quite fast because uh, retrieving documents by IDs from MongoDB is like sub few millisecond operation. And as I said, Elasticsearch can crunch through 100 million entries in like 200 milliseconds. So works pretty well. Um, does that explain it? Let me know if that's not clear or uh, there are some parts that you want uh, explained in depth, I guess. Okay, uh, let, I mean, meanwhile, I can just write a readme. Yes, uh, this, you know what? I'm gonna be lazy and copy from one of the other things. Add React Native, yes, there we go. Um, there, readme. Uh, so in your case, you were asking about uh, Firebase. Uh, and um, yeah. That's the idea. So like basically you would have slice of Firebase that you would need to search over um, in the Elasticsearch and then still query Firebase to return your full documents. If of course, if they are large uh, enough to do that, because if you have small documents, then you can just throw them into Elasticsearch and not even think about that. On search um so renato is asking if i would suggest working in the university well that depends so the thing is is that salary here is definitely significantly lower than in you would find in typical enterprise in germany for example right but um you will have way more uh way more interesting projects you will have way more projects over the course of year because you typically just swap all the time. So you will learn more technologies. Plus you have opportunity to experiment and try to break things. So we have quite a lot of projects that never were quite worked out or you know were uh, producing very poor results and we just scrape them or rethink them from scratch. And you have a luxury of doing that in university while in enterprise you're typically locked with um, you know, like we have a customer, he wants things done and you only can deliver or you will fail and you'll be fired or, you know, something bad will happen. So in university, you have a luxury of being like, okay, I'm going to go and screw over with stuff and, and see if that works. So this is how I basically built ExoFrame because I just had some, uh, we had some problems with deployments. I was like, okay, I'm going to try to build a command line tool that will allow one uh, one command deployments uh, for our master students who don't know anything about Docker. And well, I mean, it works, you know, it, it, it worked out quite well and like now it has 260 stars on GitHub and I'm really proud of it. So it depends, you know. Um, large documents in Elasticsearch, uh, wait a second, document, it's, it's in, uh, it's in, in, in uh, Elasticsearch reference. Uh, so it, I think it's a Lucene uh, limitation, but wait a second. Lucene documents. Uh, yeah, there you go. Each Elasticsearch shard is a uh, Lucene index. There's a maximum number of documents you can have in a single Lucene index. The limit is uh, blah, blah, blah. So this, this is the limits of the documents you can have per index, which is, uh, I think it handles it somehow differently so you can shard it. But wait, there was a, not max, not maximum document size. There you go. So I think it was like a few megabytes. I mean, it's quite big. Yeah, 16 megabytes. So it, it is large, like 16 megabytes of JSON is a lot. But you know, it's like, you can, I think you can up it. So you, there's a config, config options for Elasticsearch where you can say, hey, I want a larger document, but it's not recommended by the documents. And I think it slows down the search significantly. 
Um, from partial experience, yes, handles documents of hundreds of megabytes just fine. Okay, as you can see, some people are using it with hundreds of megabytes. So I, I just never had a need to do that. And uh, in our case, it was more important to have a sub uh, second search results rather than uh, throwing everything into the Elasticsearch. That's why we opted in for two databases that would store the documents uh, because we had the documents that were like, um, I think a hundred megabytes or something. Yeah, we decided not to experiment with it because we need the results quick and just throw it into MongoDB. And I mean, yeah, as I said, so it's like you get 200 or 100, 200 milliseconds of search from Elasticsearch. And then you got a few milliseconds, I think it's like 20 or something to fetch those from MongoDB with the correct indices. So, you know, uh, obviously, if you're going to have larger documents, you are going to need to have more RAM, for example. I assume the indexes are also going to be way larger. So yeah, it's like trade-offs, trade-offs as, as usually. So many of our index uh, for um, introduction to stick search video, a simple um, search as R two simple elastic charge applications that um okay following things elastic come on tech demonstrates usage of elastic search along with Bana and uh Log stash for logging and search demonstrates usage of plastic search for data querying based on OSM. It's clear enough, hopefully. We need to, uh, yeah. Over here, and I think we're good. Update with me. Okay. Um, I was thinking. Of, no, no. A couple of megabytes is is something that is very trivial for Elasticsearch. So there's like literally no problems with that. Um. All right. I think we're done with that. That looks good. So I just need to paste the video here and probably should tag all of those at some point. I mean, those topics, I know. Have you guys used those topics on GitHub? Are those useful at all? Like I, I'm, I'm thinking like I probably should add them at some point, but I'm so lazy about that. Uh, yes. Uh, so why is this asking if any of us have a PS4? I do have a PS4. Um, I'm only basically using it for exclusive games like, you know, Bloodborne that I still haven't finished and I'm feeling I will never finish or First Destiny or, um, what was it? The, the robots game. Oh man, come on. It's for exclusive. What was the robots game where you play as a, as a girl with a bow and, and murderate robots who are like dinosaur robots? Uh, th th this is the screenshots from it. How can I finished it? How can I forget the name? Come on, not Persona 5. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, right? That was like one of the best games I played uh, in the first half of this year, I think. It was really, really good. All right. Okay, good. We're good. Uh, yeah, this is not anywhere. Yeah, obviously. Um, okay. Right, guys. So do you have any other questions or can we wrap it up here? What do you think? Yeah. Right. There we go. Um, oh, there's a Monster Hunter open world beta. Ooh, wait a second, wait a second. I have to, <laughs> now that you talk about it, yes, I am gonna check it out. Monster Hunter world open beta. I would prefer to check it out on computer, but uh, you know, what the hell, why do I have a PS4 then? 
Um, yes, okay, let me see. That is December 9th to 12th. Yeah, I should be in town. That should work. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know about that. I mean, I'm definitely in on that. I'm quite excited about the uh, Monster Hunter game on PC because I tried playing it on consoles and, and that just didn't work for me. I don't know why. Maybe like I, some action games I cannot play if they are below 60 FPS, I just feel sick. It's like, ugh. but maybe this one works out. Yes, I'm definitely gonna be checking that out. Right. Monster Hunter World is PlayStation exclusive. No, it's coming out to the PC as well. I I think I, I, I've read somewhere that it's going to be released on, on... No, it's not exclusive at all. See, PS4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows. So it's going to come out on everything. And I believe it's going to be on Steam as well. So I, that's where I'm going to buy it. Or are you talking about the Horizon Zero Dawn? Then yes, it is indeed... Um, PlayStation exclusive. I mean, 60 FPS is the minimum I agree to play. It's like um, 144 after I bought this gaming uh, screen is what I would love to play on. It's like Overwatch and 144 Hertz is amazing with G-Sync and everything, you know. Uh, sure. I mean, just ping me on Discord. Let's uh, connect on PSN or you know whatever that works because I don't really have that many people added there. So I'm I'm all in. I'm all in. Let's try. Let's try that. Okay. Uh, let me think. Have I forgot to add anything here? Yes. Uh. Plastic search with Node.js. Let's call it this way. Tutorial in the search with Node.js. That sounds like a better title, right? Logging. Yes. This way. Yeah. Yes. Go. And we got wait, uh, no names. That is good. Okay, cool. Oh, the open beta is PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they, they for some reason, they love to only launch it on consoles. I guess they don't really have to implement any anti-cheat measures or anything there and, and not fear that the pirates will take the old um, executable file and then just patch it and add it to the final game, which is what happens in like 90% of times. <laughs> yeah, okay, that makes sense. Read me, yes, my commit messages lately have been very, very good. Uh, don't do that on your proper projects. Okay, good, that is better. Right. Okay, I think that might be a good place to wrap this up. So, um, unless again, you have any other questions. That's 30% shell, this is all elastic stack thing. Too many shell conflicts. You just do a proper Docker container. I mean, come on. Okay, whatever. Right. <sighs> All right, guys. I guess that's a good spot to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you found the Elasticsearch tutorial uh, for logging or for searching, uh, whatever you want to see uh, useful. As usual, I'm going to record the uh, video that will kind of summarize all of what happened today in 20 minutes i guess maybe i don't know 15 20 i don't i'm not sure how long will it take for me to talk through all of those bits um i typically plan to release videos in the beginning of the week but since i'm going to be traveling on the weekends i am going to be back only on tuesday so i'm thinking that basically video is going to be here either on wednesday or on thursday so you know the schedule is a bit messed up because of the travels but now what you gonna do? Um, yeah, if you have any suggestions for the next stream, for the next batch of videos, next tutorials, do let me know. 
uh, I am open to everything. Uh, so far, the suggestions have been great. I mean, Elasticsearch is a lot of fun to play with and uh, quite easy to show. I mean, it's a very simple technology. But yeah. Right. All right. Then uh, have a nice evening. Thank you for staying with me. And as usual, see you next time. Bye.